first, first I want to say that I'm going to talk about uh, Burning Man and my art and other stuff. But Burning Man has like a pretty special place in my heart. And to prove that, today's my birthday and they get convinced to, to wake up on a Sunday 7 a.m. to prepare my presentation. Uh, that's what Burning Man, uh, how they fuck up your life. Anyway, years ago, I think 15 years ago, for the first time I went to Burning Man. My mom, a few years before that, she showed me a small snippet from an article in a newspaper and said, I, I don't know what this is, I see all these naked painted people, some cool art, it's a desert, you should go there. <laughs> a few years later, I went there for the first time, I joined the Black Rock Gazette, and I didn't know what to expect, and I thought this would be some kind of like freaky, hip fest uh, with hippies and artists and cool stuff and I would go there once, I could run around, drop whatever kind of magic stuff and uh, be naked or whatever, but that would be once. But the second person I met was a lawyer who worked in Bahrain and that's the moment when I realized this is really special because all these things that are happening here, the ideas that are conceived out in that magical desert, they will make their way into society. So I felt like I should contribute as well and the next year I went to the desert with a ship. I built a wooden three-master here in the Netherlands. Uh, it's already burning there. It was a long story though. Um, for me, what was really uh, very special about that is that I never was, I thought, a materialistic person. But in a way I was because I was very attached to my art. And I felt like, what happens when for a year you spend all your money, time, sweat, blood and tears Making something really beautiful, I painted every centimeter of it and then burning it. I mean, getting to the desert is a big task. I mean, building it here and shipping it, everything, but I knew I could do that. I didn't know how I would react to the burning. I thought it would hurt and I would be happy at the same time. But the moment it burned and that was so beautiful, I just had this huge smile. I know my accountant didn't smile for two years. <laughs> but, and, and it gave me this kind of, and it sounds making me negative, but it's not this fuck you mentality that I could do everything after that. And with the ship I made, uh, and that's one thing I also want to talk about, I love the connection, and I think Burning Man is also striving more and more to accomplish that between like Burning Man and the real, so-called real world. I don't think there is a real and not real world. So the ship was the main stage at Mysteryland on Ruigort. Oh. Uh, I built it at a shipyard here in uh, Amsterdam, the NSM shipyard. And actually it also went to the Ural festival <coughs> where, and this is a little bit strange for a ship, but it's the only time it ever saw water. Wow. So it's building a whole story, but also bringing it to different worlds and also bringing it to so-called reality. Because in a way, even though I really love Burning Man, it's also a safe environment. It's a festival where people expect weird stuff. But I love doing that weird stuff as well, just right in the center of cities or where people don't know what to expect, and uh, yeah, I kind of like mind fucking. Um, <laughs> for me, as said, the Fool's Ark was really important. It was a personal journey, burning it as well, and I learned so much from it. But in a way, it was also like me, the artist, building something, showing it, even though it was interactive, people could climb on it, and we organized events. Mm -hmm. I thought the next year I made something way smaller, but it was much more interactive, and people, it's the gray man, could like customize all these gray men, uh, paint them, do stuff on them, and then 150 people got the chance to burn their inner gray man in their own private <laughs> ritual. Wow. Then for a few years I needed to get my life back, I didn't go to Burning Man, but I did, uh, I mean, I did a lot of things. This one, I built a big pink tank on a rooftop here in Amsterdam, which I blew up with explosives. <laughs> That's just to show that I didn't do nothing for those five years when I didn't go to Burning Man. And then I built Checkpoint Dream Utopia, which was a border control checkpoint to enter your own dreams. I was head of the Department of Dreamland Security, because obviously <laughs> if you wanted to dream, you needed permission. And uh, interesting was that obviously there's always, when you do a project, there's the part when it's all the physical work and you need to build and you're exhausted. But we just managed in time to get it all done. And then the first day we did the performance. And everything was fun and people got, uh, I will actually,
give around. Besides flights, there's also real stuff. So people could get a dream passport. There's one here that will go around. So uh, I always love to focus on details and give people small things where you can see that every small millimeter is worked out as well. But so we did this performance the first day and it was all fun and everybody was entertained and everybody got a passport and it was all fun and we felt so bad because it didn't mean anything. And then what happened during that week, we uh, kept becoming more hardcore. Like when the interrogations were there, it was no fun anymore. We would scream at people, we would make them wait for four hours and people started crying. People started breaking down, people got really pissed off because after all they thought this is, an, I mean, on a festival you want to get entertained. But the beautiful thing is that by doing that, it was kind of blurring the line between art and reality. And then it became something that really changed people's minds. And a year ago, and that for me was so special, it's like five years after the project, I got an email from someone uh, via my website, and that person told me, like, maybe you would love to know this, but when I die, there's one thing I want to take with me in my grave, and it's the dream passport. So, it's, it's like, that's, it, you don't do it for that, I do everything because there's this inner urge to create, but I mean, an email like that keeps me going for at least another year. Uh, and then, um, um, I didn't burn the checkpoint, and this is something that I'm not always a big fan, to be honest, of Burning Man, that everything is just burnt. I go like, I've never in my life understood why people need to get a job or you work nine to five. Somehow, I don't, I don't know why you're supposed to do that. And I also don't know why you're supposed to go to Burning Man and burn shit. You can do other stuff there. Like with the boat, it was really important for me. It was a personal journey. When I see something like a temple, I think it's so powerful when it burns. But sometimes I just ask myself, like people bring stuff there and they just build it and burn it. Is it really, because it's not good for our planet if we're honest. And I think you need to offset it with something. When it's really important, you have to burn it, but otherwise you could think about it. So, what I, I mean, burning makes your life easier. What I had to do was ship the whole checkpoint to Berlin, uh, and then we rebuild it in an old swimming pool, which is great, because you have the vastness of the desert, and you're, you have this claustrophobic swimming pool, and then we ran it for, I think, like 70 hours straight. People got interrogated, and then at a certain point, there was a revolt. So all these street and graffiti artists came in, they, uh, spray painted the whole project and then uh, we smashed it to pieces with so no, no burning uh, with chainsaws and sledgehammers it was like bringing down the wall between dreams and reality and this was exactly 20 years after the Berlin Wall fell and it was exactly 40 years after my parents fled from Poland behind the uh, Iron Curtain so it's, uh, I always think that projects uh, they are a personal journey as well and besides that obviously you want to maybe show people things or mindfuck them, but the biggest mindfuck is always for yourself. And then uh, I took a break again for a few years, and then I felt like, what's not there at Burning Man? But in a way, obviously, it is there money. So we came with uh, a bank. I started my own bank, the Exchange Exhibition Bank. And now maybe you can... Uh, sure. So we, uh, what we did, and since it's my birthday, I thought like I should give you a gift, so you'll all get uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we had the bank, and we could obviously not exchange real money on the playa, so what we did was ask people like what they did for money that was bad for the karma or bad for the karma of the planet. Then they could sign a spiritual karma laundering contract, and we would bring their spiritual karma debt back to zero. And they would get the zero bill, which you now uh, all get. And then it's again about bridging like ideas and seeds that are planted at Burning Man and bringing them to the real world. This is the Exchange Mission Bank in the museum, the Boymans Museum. But we also did it a whole day in the Central Station in Amsterdam. Nice. And I love that because in this, the big hall of the Central Station, people don't know what it is. There, it's, there's no sign that tells them this is art, this is, uh, I don't know, this is a performance, this is a real bank. And that's when you have to judge for yourself. Nobody will help you like what something is. And also that's uh, one other thing that actually a remark I wanted to make was Checkpoint Dream Utopia when we, like, when we became really tough and some people got really pissed off and some people were crying but for a lot of people it meant it really became something for them. I don't really, I mean entertainment sometimes is great but I think a festival and art, everything should go beyond entertainment and that's for me a bit like entertainment, it distracts our attention and for me art is something that focuses our attention. 
This was, uh, again, another money project. A year later, we brought the Transfer Money Tree, and everybody could glue money on their real money, which was a challenge, obviously, because nobody has money with them. And people could paint and draw on money. And uh, it kind of had this extra edge that I know that drawing on money is a federal offense in the United States. So for a while, I thought that I might be uh, facilitating and be in a criminal organization or everything. But I just smiled and we had beautiful suits, so that wasn't the problem. This is uh, 2013, the last project I built at Burning Man. Like for real, so I started this kind of religion where we guided people on the... I mean, shouldn't we first experience at least this artwork before making photos? So people could click our like top and they could uh, choose between the red like and blue like and then go upstairs and just try to experience something. And at least when you experience it and after it you make a photo, okay then, you know the photo has a story and it's not... Because, I mean, you can find all these photos on Flickr. You don't need to take a photo of all these. I don't know how many projects are there, like 658 or... That's a good, uh... Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, nice. <laughs> I'm a bit autistic. I remember all these numbers. Next. Uh, and that's actually the first time in like 13 years or 12 years I did burn a project. And it was a symbolic act of giving the act of liking, taking it from its virtual domain and giving it back to its natural reality. And then, uh, again, as I said, I love translating ideas of what stuff that I'm building there, bringing them to the so-called real world. We made a theater play out of it, but also I... Oh yeah, this is first about controversy. Uh, that's, that's where I think that uh, it's not that important to please everybody. I mean, it's about getting a reaction, getting a gut reaction. What we started was Checkpoint Dream Utopia. I know, I, I received one email so I told you about the email, the guy that wanted to bur be buried with his dream passport. Another guy emailed me and said like, oh, I so hope you bring back this project next year so I can take a giant dump on it. <laughs> uh, but as long as you touch people, it's, for me, it's a, the worst reaction for me is people, they would just say like, oh, we love the colors. So for months, uh, it went on the controversy. And it's very interesting because people saw it from miles away. It was pretty big. And they went like, there's this thing, there's no logo on that, a Burning Man. So I went like, what the fuck is this? And other people, they actually went to take a look and they saw our performance, they read the like festo, so they got it. And then these people got in a discussion between themselves. And I like the fact that it's a mirror of our society where people seem to judge something. They don't even read articles you just like or dislike, but don't take a closer look. I mean, if, you've, uh, if there's something you see and go like, what the fuck is this? Then at least take a look and see what you hit. Um, this is another way of translating it through the real world. Uh, we organized a funeral for the like a few months ago in uh, Amsterdam. And then uh, we went into, uh, in procession into town. And uh, do we, I love doing stuff that's also unpredictable. And what's not predictable for me was that I think like 150 people joined. And at a certain point, we passed the Apple store, and then suddenly I saw the coffin going into the Apple store. Uh, and everybody thought the manager freaking out was part of the act. But... And then, um, this is something that, uh, to be honest, this morning I woke up, even though it's my birthday, I set my alarm clock early because I didn't have time to prepare the presentation, so I made the PowerPoint and everything. But there's something very new that happened two weeks ago. Because suddenly I'm going to organize a festival myself, which I, until like a few weeks ago, did, never knew that was going to happen. And it's like all the stuff that I've learned from projects and translated to the real world. It's interesting to uh, do, create this kind of platform or a part of life where I can try together, obviously, with a whole group of people and more and more people, hopefully, to create a vision that will translate into another kind of world where everybody will get their own passport, where we will have a new kind of money which hopefully over years can develop into a real alternative currency where we'll have our own time zone and especially a place which for me is not, because for me Burning Man has never been, uh, maybe my reality is a bit twisted, but it has never been another kind of reality. I believe there's only one reality and with this festival I also want to concentrate on the fact that it's not an escape from reality, but it's in a reality which goes beyond your horizon and where people can, where we, like I know there's a group of people, there are squatters, they organize together with other loose collectives, Technifall, which is a legal squad rave. They'll be part of it, Think the School for Creative Leadership, 
wants to be that as well. And I want to bring these kind of people who never meet each other together and then just see uh, what's happening. And um, it's a festival, it's not based for me. I still have to figure out on what it is. It's not based on just bringing people together, but really connecting them. So we won't have free Wi-Fi, but we do have free UFI. And um, um, yeah, the last thing I wanted to say is since I started writing the vision and philosophy, but that's only the start, and that's where everybody else needs to finish the story. If there's anybody here who wants to get involved or think they can push this beyond, since it's my birthday, I hope uh, I can ask as a gift that you can maybe try to give me ideas for this, put some energy into it, and maybe get involved uh, as well. Thank you.